Hello friends, Kofi here and welcome back to my YouTube channel, Tutor Med. And here, indeed, medicine is simplified. So far, we have discussed three lab investigations, the hepatitis B serology, full blood count, and then the liver function test. In this video, we will discuss the interpretation of another one, a routine urine examination, otherwise called urinalysis and this is the part one of the video kindly subscribe to our channel if you haven't done that yet and let's delve into this investigation and thank you for doing just that and so as usual before we begin any major discussion we review some basic medical concepts what i call first principles now the heart as shown in this image is a circulatory pump of the body and supplies blood to the various organs of the body including the kidney but for the purposes of this topic we will concentrate on the kidneys the blood it supplies has a solid component called blood cells and then a liquid component called plasma which is mostly water in which substances are dissolved the substances which are dissolved in the plasma include food substances like glucose, amino acids, and fatty acids from digestion, and then waste products like urea from amino acid digestion or metabolism, creatinine, uric acid, and then hormones like insulin, thyroxine, ions like sodium, calcium, hydrogen, bicarbonate ions, and then plasma proteins like albumin, some antibodies, clotting factors. Now these substances can be remembered by the mnemonic F quip. F for food substances, H for sorry, W for waste products, H for hormones, I for ions, P for plasma proteins and then they are not limited to only these because you can have drugs etc. Now these substances are going to the kidneys to be filtered. Now this is an overly simplified diagram showing the kidneys blood supply via the renal artery which is a branch of the aorta. A very important point to note here is that the renal circulation gets about 20% or one-fifth of the cardiac's output or cardiac output, I should have said. And so, in a minute, the heart pumps about 5 liters of blood and the kidney gets 20%, which is a liter of that blood. In fact, it is estimated that in 24 hours, the kidneys, if normal, filter about 180 liters of blood and so the point here to note is that the renal circulation gets 20 percent of the heart's output in a minute all right and so this image shows the gross structure of the two kidneys and their blood vessels and so we have the renal vein which drains into the inferior vena cava as labeled and the renal artery although not clear here is behind the renal vein but the focus here is that if we should examine these kidneys microscopically we will find that each of the kidneys is made up of millions of this structure called the nephron which is the functional unit of the kidney the first structure i want to point out here is the afferent arterial a branch of the renal artery which brings blood into this network of unique capillaries called glomerulus and here the first process involved in urine formation takes place glomerular filtration after the glomerulus has filtered the blood the filtrate enters the Bowman's capsule and then journeys through this series of renal tubules where the second and last processes of urine formation takes place reabsorption and then 
secretion. Afterwards, the filtrate exits the collecting duct where water may be absorbed and then it enters the collecting system, the renal pelvis, the ureters, the bladder and finally comes out as urine. Now still on glomerular filtration, the glomerulus is a unique capillary system which permits large volumes of blood to be filtered along with some small molecules like sodium and potassium but not large molecules and negatively charged molecules like albumin and the blood cells. As mentioned earlier, in 24 hours, the glomerular system is able to filter about 180 liters of blood. To give an idea of that, these are 1 liter bottles. And so picture that the glomeruli in 24 hours are able to filter 180 times this volume. And so the filtrate contains food substances like glucose, waste products like creatinine, urea, water, hormones, ions, but not plasma proteins like albumin because they are very large and negatively charged and not blood cells. Now this filtrate when it journeys through the renal tubules are absorbed such that out of the 180 liters only one liter comes out as urine in 24 hours and then most of the substances in the filtrates like glucose completely absorbed most of the sodium is absorbed most of the water is absorbed leading to that reduced volume as urine After the formation, the urine trickles down the collection system. So from the kidneys, it enters the renal pelvis, the ureters, the bladder, and finally as urine. This means that when there's a problem on the urine analysis panel, it could be that the urine produced by the kidney was fine but when they got to the collecting systems, a problem with the collecting system made it abnormal. So an abnormal urine exam first can come from the blood itself. The kidney filtered an abnormal blood or the blood can be normal and then the problem is from the kidneys or the blood and the kidney very normal. But the urine which went into the collecting system because of a pathology like UTI made maybe proteins go high. And so we'll illustrate this in the next slide. Now let us demonstrate this using a patient who comes with red urine or hematuria per the urine exam. Like we said, the problem may not necessarily come from the kidney. Number one, it may be a problem from the blood in coat. By this, what I mean is there may be a pre-renal process which has added a pigment to the blood such that when the kidney filters that kind of blood, the resulting filtrate looks bloody. For example, in a patient who has suffered a crash injury or rhabdomyolysis, which is a breakdown of the muscle, the muscle releases myoglobin into the blood and so the kidneys end up filtering the myoglobin and not reabsorbing really all, leading to a red urine from myoglobinuria. Other processes that can give this presentation, we have hemoglobinuria from hemolysis, drugs like rifampicin, and then foods like beetroot can also change urine color and make it red. It may be a problem from the kidneys, so a patient with glomerular injury, maybe nephritic syndrome, a patient with renal cancer which is bleeding. And then lastly, it may be a post-renal problem explaining the hematuria to a problem with the collecting system. So a patient has a bleeding ureteral or bladder tumor or a patient has bladder schistosomiasis. All these can result in hematuria. So an abnormal urine exam may be a pre-renal, an intra-renal or a post-renal condition. And so now having understood the basic sciences, let's look at the components of the analysis. They are typically three. 
the first you want to look at is the physical appearance or urine microscopy and the first parameter there is urine color so you pick the urine observe the color is it abnormal then the next is the odor and then turbidity the acronym here is cot however most labs do not report on the odor and then the perception of the odor is very subjective in our next video we will look into details the physical appearance or urine microscopy The next component of urinalysis is urine dipstick. So after we have observed the physical appearance, here we put a dipstick as shown on our left into a sample of the urine and then detect some color changes. And then these color changes correspond to some substances. So the acronym here we use, give him a slap bank bank is assumed to be someone's name and so G for glucose H for him sometimes labeled as blood S for the specific gravity L for leukocyte esterase P for the pH of the urine B for bilirubin U for urobilinogen N for nitrites and then K for ketones in our second video after this, we will look into details how to interpret the urine dipstick. And so the last component of urinalysis is urine microscopy. And here, the lab technician takes a sample of the urine and then places it in a centrifuge and then centrifuge it to about more than 1,500 revolutions per minute so that the urine can be separated into a liquid part called the supernatant and then a solid part or a relatively solid part called the sediment and then it is the sediment you are going to examine under the microscope and so for the things you are looking for in the sediment one the cells you want to know whether there are red blood cells white blood cells epithelial cells number two we are looking for casts do not worry about this now We'll talk about it later in our subsequent videos. Number three, we want to know whether there are crystals in the sediment. Crystals like calcium oxalate crystals, cysteine crystals, uric acid crystals. Number four, we want to know whether there are microorganisms in the sediment, bacteria, candida, etc. All right, friends, now our take home summary. First, Urine is the end product of three processes. Glomerular filtration, tubular reabsorption, and tubular secretion. Secondly, abnormal urine exam findings may be from a condition which has already made the blood red, like myoglobinemia. So it could be from the blood, the renal units, or the kidneys or it could be from a collecting system, the bladder, etc. The third point is that urine exam or urinalysis involves three components. One, urine macroscopy, then urine dipstick, and then finally, urine microscopy.